Hi everyone. So today we're working on did you mean recursion? This is lesson three. This is going to be our last lesson before we take our test. Happy days. And this was our do now right here, the, uh, the warm up. The local bank has agreed to donate $250 to the annual turkey fund to help feed families in need. Uh, in addition, uh, for every uh, bank customer that donates 50 bucks, the bank will also donate $25. Okay, so the sequence describes uh, a, a sequence describes a relationship between the numbers fifty dollar donations and the amount of the donation of the bank donates, as and then um, and so is the sequence arithmetic or geometric? And in so this is we made this in class. So if you notice right here, where is my mouse? Right here. So this is, starts at two fifty, right here. So it starts at 250 and then we add seventy five dollars every single time. And you're like, well, how do we add seventy five dollars? Remember, it was Originally, the fifty dollars that the the bank uh, the cust bank customer is going to donate, and then twenty five dollars for uh, the from the bank. So altogether, that would be seventy five dollar donation. All right. So then the next one, so is two fifty plus seventy five, which is going to be three twenty five, and so and so on and so forth. So, um, and how can you calculate the tenth term based on the ninth term? Basically, remember it's whatever it was previous plus the $75 and that's gonna give us that. If you look at right here, it's gonna be a ninth term plus the $75 and that's gonna give us our 10th term. And uh, how can you, what is the 20th term? That one, maybe we will need to know the 19th term, but we don't know the 19th term until we know the 18th term. And honestly, right now we have only the fourth term. So um, we're gonna to have to do a lot of calculations or maybe there's a better way, right? So our learning target today is uh, write recursive formulas for arithmetic and geometric sequences from context. Uh, write explicit expressions for arithmetic and geometric sequences from context. And then use those said formulas uh, to determine unknown terms of a sequence, whether it is geometric or arithmetic. All right. Uh, and if you look at right here, this is, as you can see, the recursive. Uh, and if you're like, wait, what is arithmetic and geometric? It's right over here. So arithmetic, remember, is when we're adding. We're adding differences. We keep on adding them, right? Uh, adding differences, adding a number, or adding or subtracting a number, and then uh, and we signify what that what that difference is by the common difference. Okay, what do we keep on adding by, or what do we keep on subtracting by? And geometric is going to be uh, we're instead of adding, we're going to just be multiplying. Okay, so they're going to have a common ratio. All right, um, and uh, which is signified by R, common ratio. All right, so here, this is what we call the recursive. So, which means we're going to take, we just need to know the previous term, and then we add 75 to it, and that's going to give us our, whatever term we want, right? And so more specifically, uh, we're going to be using A for arithmetic, since this is arithmetic. So if we want the 10th term, so this is, the A is talking about the term. So which term do we want? We want the 10th one. That's why we have like a little subscript right here. So that's going to give us the 10th term is equal to the ninth term. How do we signify ninth term? A sub nine, right? And then that's going to be plus 75, just like that. So this is what that would look like. And we'll go get more into this and a little bit. That's one of our learning targets, right? And our explicit, we're like, okay, there's got to be a better way. Remember when we wanted to find the 20th one? And so we had talked about that a little bit. We're like, okay, we start at 250. But then every time we add 75, right? So whenever we have repeated addition, what are we actually doing? We could actually replace that with multiplication, right? So if we were to find this fourth term right here, let's pretend we didn't know it. Okay, and this is how I figure things out, uh, trying to figure it out with something that I do know and then apply it to the thing that I don't know. So I'm like, okay, I could do that two different ways. I could say 25 plus 75 plus 75 plus 75. Or instead of doing 75 three times, I could just go three times 75, right? And so if you relate this three to the four, right? This four, because we want the fourth term, we're like, oh, it's just one less than that. So if you look right here, notice it's all that, the space in between. So it's from 40 to 475. That's 70, that's the 75 difference, right? So um, if we're for looking for the fourth one, we only need to add three 75s together, right? So that's where we're getting that. And so if you now to apply it with our explicit, right? Um, our explicit, our, our 20th term, bad days. So we're gonna start with a 250 because the starting point is still the same. Plus now we're, we're, if we have 20 numbers, right? We have 19 spaces. 
which means that that's going to be 19 times the 75. So we have 19 groups of 75 that we, we want to add up. So 19 times 75, and then that's going to give us our 20th term. All right, and if we want to know, so if we have 19 people, let me see if I could find my calculator. If we have 19 people um, donating, right, how much money do we actually donate? So let me clear this up. Yes, I do want to clear it. Um, so we got 250 plus 19 times 75 is equal to, oh, $1,675. There we go. So there, oh, it's right here. Now you know. So $1,675. That's how that goes. All right, so this is the explicit formula where where this is actually useful to us. So we can do any any terms. What if a hundred people donate? Right? Could we figure that out? Yes. But using the recursive, not that easy, right? Because you actually need to know what the previous term would be. Okay, if it's given to you, then that's pretty easy. That's probably easier than doing the explicit, but usually that's not given to us. So, all right. So we're going on to the next page now. Rico owns a sports a sports goods store, sporting goods store right same kind of idea still donating so uh he's going to donate it 125 dollars up front right but for every home run they hit what's going to happen he's going to donate 18 bucks it's a good incentive so what happens if he if they hit oh this is a bad season they hit no home runs how much do they get straight 125 dollars right but if they get one they can add 18 dollars to that right to see how we're adding here so they would get $143 and so on and so forth. Uh, and assuming that they hit nine home runs, so that would be like here, the 10th term, they would get $287. That's pretty good, right? Um, so the more home runs, the better. So identify the sequence type. Well, we're obviously just adding 18 every single time. So we are definitely in the world of arithmetic, okay? We're adding 18 every time. And, then, and that 18 is our D. That's our uh, common difference, not common ratio. Um, yeah, they just said come right here. They didn't want to give it away. And so we completed the table. And if you have not completed the table, please make sure you go do that and explain how you can calculate the 10th term based on the ninth term. Well, whatever the ninth term is, we're going to add 18 to it to get the 10th term. See, this is recursive. They're getting you ready for recursive. All right. So, oh, look, recursive formula. There we go. So for the recursive formula, um, I know this looks a little bit confusing and that's okay right? So A sub N, so basically the N means any term, pick a term, any term, right? And uh, this N minus one is just the one previous term, right? So if this N was, let's say 10, what is 10 minus one? That's nine. So that'd be the ninth term, right? So it just whatever it is, minus one. So that's going to be the ninth term. And then this is obviously the common difference, just like how we did up here, okay? The 10th term equals the ninth term. Remember the one previous? And then plus the 18, that was a common difference. And that's what I wrote over here. So if you did not write this down in class, I would make sure, or if you were not in class, I would make sure you write this part down, okay? Because that's what the recursive formula is in words. If this, uh, if these letters are, are confusing you, that's okay. But take a look at them because it's good to get used to that um, because that is the actual formula. And it's kind of easier to write it this way than this way. <laughs> it's smaller, less, less letters, right? And um, again, like this, so we call this A, remember A is equal to the term, and we call it instead of A5, I mean, you can call it A5, that's okay, but we uh, you'll sometimes hear me call it A sub 5, so because it's a subscript, so it's sub 5, okay? Like a submarine, it goes under, like this, the 5 goes under, so it's like a, so you don't, you don't do a straight like A5 where the sizes are the same, and I lost my mouse, okay, there you go. So we don't do like an A5, it's not the same size, it is A sub five so it's a smaller okay kind of like how you would do an exponent but lower okay so moving on um so let's take a look at this guy right here we have our worked example so we have negative two negative nine negative 16 negative 23. Uh, i'm not even going to look down there yet because i want to take a look at this so what am i doing i'm getting smaller right i'm getting more and more negative how much do i am I getting more negative by well from negative two to negative six negative nine is negative seven, right? And so from negative nine to negative 16 is also negative seven, right? Just, just to check, yep, that's also negative seven. So this, a common difference right here is negative seven, okay? I keep on adding negative seven every single time to get smaller and smaller number, right? 
And so um, to write the recursive formula, it's really simple, actually. All you need to do is just be like, okay, a n is equal to any any term. You can get any term by getting its previous term. So a a sub n minus one plus negative seven, or you could just go minus seven. That's the recursive formula. So if I ask you to write the recursive formula, that's the only thing you need to change is that plus or minus seven, or the the the, the common difference, basically. That's the only thing you need to change. You don't have to change anything else, right? Everything else stays the same. So now when you want to try it, try it for a, a certain term, right? Let's say right here, they were looking for the fifth term right here, right? So if it's the fifth term, you just play, plug in. So it's A5 to, to show that, oh, we're looking for the fifth term is equal to A sub 5 minus 1, which is 4, right? And then plus negative 7. So this is how it would look like right here, right? And if we could figure out that fourth term, well, actually, we do have it. One, two, three, four. There's a fourth term, negative 23. So yeah. you just plug in negative 23 in for A4. And so negative 23 plus negative 7, which would be negative 30. So the fifth term is equal to negative 30. And if you were to just look at just this part right here, you would know, oh, we're talking about the fifth term, okay, because it's because uh, you look at the subscript. So if I had something like, a 10 is equal to 26 you would know oh in some sequence and as we know it's arithmetic we know that the 10th term is 26. i don't know what the ninth term is but i know that the 10th term is 26 because i don't know what the common difference is if i gave you the common difference now you could figure it out but we don't know what the common difference is right now so but that's how you would that's how you could read that all right, so what if what if we were to do it without uh, with the remember the Rico and the baseball? So again, right here, this was our example. So a this is our re recursive formula, right? So a sub n is equal to a sub n minus one plus eighteen, right? So because that was our common difference, and so we're going to set to look for the eleventh term. So let's do that. So we plugged in eleven in for n, right? Do you see that right here? Eleven. Let me use my highlighter here. So we have the eleven right here. And this is 11 minus 1, which is 10, okay? And then so I know that the 10th term is 287. If you scroll all back over here, yep, there's 287. That's the 10th term. And uh, then we add that to 18, and then we would just get 305. So our, our 11th term is 305. One may wonder, well, couldn't you just do it without the formula? I'm like, yeah, you could. But it's a good, a good one to know, okay? And so... And is there a way to calculate the 20th term, right? How do we do it with the 20th term? Um, we can. So we can take the first term, right? Whatever that first term was, just like how we did for the do now, right? We take the first term. So how much they're going to give us. So this first term right here is that 125, right? And then what? And we kept on adding to 125. We kept on adding 18 to 125. Well, how many 18s would we have to add in order to get to the 19th term, right? If you remember, it's the spaces in between. So if you have 20 of them, 20 of them, there are 19 spaces, right, that we're adding. So we're going to go, so this is the previous. So if we have, if we want the 20th term, here's that previous term right there, which is 19 in our case. And then our common difference here is 18. Okay. So that's the, that's what the formula would look like. So I kind of want to know, I want to write it down before we get there. So remember the term, so we, we said that was a n, a sub n, right, is equal to 125. So if that's the first term, how would we say the first term, right? We were like, oh, a1, right, a sub 1, plus, well, how do we say the, the previous term, right? So if you have a sub n, what's the one right before that? So it's just going to be a sub n minus one, right? Just like how we did for our recursive and then times that by D. So that's gonna be times D because that's our uh, common difference. This is the explicit formula. See, we could, I told you we could figure it out. Okay, and if you can see right here, oh look, explicit formula. Oh shoot, previous term. <laughs> 19 it was just a number that was my bad but there we go so here's a sub n and then that's the nth term remember we want the first term and i this is me forgetting 
And so this is a difference just like how we did. And then remember, we want the term number, right? The term number, not the term itself. So this, what we did right here is the term. This is not the term number. This is the term itself. So we should just change this to it's never happened. So remember, if it was the nth term, it's just the n minus one term, right? So if it was the 20th term, we want actually the number 19. We need to use that, okay? So that's where that's coming from. So sorry about that. So um, here, uh, just as a verbal uh, verbal reminder, this is the term we want, that's a sub n, is equal to the first term, which we know as a sub one, uh, plus the common difference, which we know as d, and then the previous term number, okay? Not the previous term, the previous term number, which would be the n minus one. Okay, so if we want the 15th term, then this would be the previous, the one number before that, which would be the 14th. So that would be 14. Because remember, we're multiplying that 14 times. So we're going to try this out. So if you take a look at this one right here, we want the 93rd term. And uh, remember, we're doing this from uh, the RICO example here. So here we have a sub 93, just like this. We I wrote it bigger here. So a sub 93 is equal to, remember, the first term, which is 125, plus 18, the common difference, and the previous term, which is 93, which is, you know, minus 1. All right, so, and then when we simplify that, that's just basically 18 times 92. All right, and then you're going to use your calculator to figure that out. Or if you want to do multiplication, then go do it by hand if you want to. And that's how much you would get. And if you look right here, your number would be, and I would practice that on your calculator. I would use your calculator uh, to do a thing. Um, so yeah, you'd get, a, if they were to make 93 home runs, which would be amazing. Like I, I hope you, they probably won at that point, right? Um, you would get, Rico would donate $1,781. That's amazing that you get some good uniforms like that, I hope, right? So same over here. So we're gonna take a look at these two sequences and we're gonna write down what the, what the formula would be, the explicit formula. So again, we want the first term. Ooh, let me see if I can get that. So here, so we have a sub n is equal to first term. And you just look, oh, look at the first term. Oh, negative four. There's my negative four. Plus, well, what's my common difference? We found it yesterday. It was two because we added two every time. So there's a two. And then we're going to go n minus one, right? So the only things that change are literally going to be, I don't want that to the same color. Is going to be this number right here and this number right here. Those are the only two things that change. The other stuff, the a sub n and the n minus one, those are going to stay the same for your formula. Once you start plugging them in, because you want, you want, when do you want to be more specific and you want to find a term, that's when you plug those in. But if I'm just asking, what's the formula? Literally, it's just the first term and the common difference. Those are the only two things that you need to know. Okay, and then you can tell me what the what the formula would be. All right, and then so let's try that for this one. So our common difference is negative 1.5, and our first term is 6.5. So again, if you see right here, a sub n, see how that's the same? And we just replace the first term with 6.5 minus 1.5, because remember it's negative, and then times n minus 1. And notice that n minus 1 is exactly the same. See? Not hard, right? Okay, and then so if we were to use that explicit formula right there, we're going to try this uh, one time here. Uh, remember, our explicit formula was a sub n is equal to 125 plus d, oh wait, what was our d? 18, right? 18 times n minus 1. All right, so we want to know, well, what, how much would we get for 35 home runs, right? And so we're like, okay, a sub 35 is equal to 125 plus 18 times, so n minus 1, which would be 34. Right, and then you just do your calculations like that. Let's see if I can get to my calculator. Ah, there it is, my calculator. And we're like, okay, so 125 plus 18 times 34. 737, that's pretty good. Not too shabby if I say so myself, right? So not too shabby. So that's gonna be, 
Oh, I totally forgot what it was. Uh, 737. All right, so $737. All right, and you would do the same thing with 48, uh, 86, and 214 um, if you want to practice that. Okay, and then so, uh, so it says Rico decides to in, uh, increase his initial contribution uh, amount and donated per home rent amount. Oh, I can't, I can't talk. That's okay. So he wants to contribute $500, right? And then we'll donate $75. Ooh, that business is going well, I guess. $75 for every home run the centipedes hit. More of a motivation, right? So what are we starting with first? 500. How much are we increasing by? 75. So this 500, this is our A sub one, right? And our 75, that's gonna be our D, right? Our common difference. From here, we can already write the equation, right? So what would it be? A sub n is equal to, what are we starting with? The first term, 500 plus 75 n minus one. I told you this, just these two things and we already know everything. We don't even have to do anything else. That's it, no calculations necessary. But we do have to find the five, first five terms. So it would be 500 and then 575 and 650. And 725 and 800 and then we only needed the first five terms so we're done all right and then uh so we're going to take a look at uh so again if we're going to determine the rico's uh, contribution for each home run let's say we want to do it for 50 right what would that look like so again we're just going to plug it in so a sub 50 is equal to 500 plus 75 and then what a 50 minus one, which is going to be 49. And we just need to calculate that out. All right. And that would be right here. So 500, oh, we're going to get way more money. 75 times 49. That's a lot more money. So 4175. So that's going to be 4175. So only 50 home runs, guys. Get four thousand seventy-five dollars, four thousand one hundred seventy-five dollars. All right. So now we are on to that was arithmetic, and now we're going to go to geometric sequences. So formulas for geometric sequences. Um, same ideas, except now we're going into multiplication. Okay. Um, so uh, this one talks about eukaryotic cells. Um, if you are familiar with those, those are just think of them as cells that divide. Okay. You got a cell, and then they split into two, and those two cells split into two. Right. And those those Four cells split into, like, they keep on doubling, right? They keep on, or splitting, I guess you can say, which is actually doubling, which is kind of confusing, but that's what it is. So we start out with one cell at first, and then we start out with two. Uh, so those one cells become two cells, and those two cells become four cells, and those four cells become eight cells, and then it goes to 16, right? See how it keeps on doubling? All right. And so, um, and if you, we, we wrote down our table here. And if you notice, yes, we keep on multiplying. We're not adding these. It's not like add one, and then... Uh, add two and then add four. We're not doing that, right? We're multiplying by two every single time. Okay, and, if, and remember, it is the same. It's constant, right? It's common. Is there a common ratio? So we're multi so r is equal to two. All right, and this is us filling out the table. If you have not done that, I would recommend that you pause and try it out, uh, and then do it. And um, here again, remember how we were going to do it. So it's our previous term, uh, and then we're going to, whatever the previous term is, we're going to multiply that by two to get the term that we want, right? Um, and so the way we're going to do it here, we're going to uh, signify, because it was A before, right? And now it's going to be, now it's going to be G. Why G? G for geometric, right? See how it makes sense? So G sub N is equal to the previous term. We know how to do previous term, right? It's just G sub N minus one, and then times that by two. This is the recursive formula. Well, this is not, this is the recursive formula for this equation, for this scenario that we have, right? Uh, we're not always going to times two. So what would we replace the two with if we wanted a general one? Well, what was the common ratio? What was the letter for that? That was R, remember? <laughs> so yeah, there it is right there. So G sub N is equal to G sub N minus one times R. There you go. So the term we want is equal to the previous term times the common ratio. Just like that. It's, it's actually pretty simple, hopefully. <laughs> All right. So same thing with this. So it's the way we would solve it is exactly the same way. So if we have um, this going on, so if you go to four to twelve, that's going to be times three, right? 
and this one here, or I maybe I should put times three. So 12 times three is gonna give me 36 and 36 times three is gonna give me 108. So what is the common ratio here? Three, right? Because we keep on multiplying this exact same numbers, three, all right? And so uh, the formula for this G sub N is equal to the previous term. So G sub N minus one times by three. Do you see how the only number we changed here was three? That was it, all right? And then you would just plug this in. So if you wanted it, so this is what I would do. I would try it out for five, right? So do it over here on the side. And then you later on, you could check and see if you got it right or not, right? So G sub five is equal to G sub five minus one, which is four times three. Well, what's G of four? Well, we already know that it's 108. So G sub five is equal to 108 times three. Well, what's 108 times three? I'm like a uh, 30, you've... 32, 33, 32, 324. <laughs> or I could have just looked over here. Or you could use your calculator, any one of those. So just by looking at this, I know the fifth term is equal to 324. Okie dokies. All right, moving on. So it says write the recursive formula for the sequence. And uh, remember the, the eukaryotic, uh, eukaryotic cell sequence. Um, so and find the 12th term, right? So if g of g of 12 is equal to g of 11, or g sub 11, I should say, uh, times two, because remember that one was doubling. And if you don't remember, you don't have g sub, g sub 11, right? So we had to find it. So this is the kind of bad part about recursive formulas. So we, there's that. And then it is going to be, it's double of 512. So it's uh, 1024. And double of 1024, well, right here is 2048. It's like a little plug for the game. <laughs> if you don't know that game, it's a good way to practice your um, doubling skills. And uh, so if you take a look right here, this is exactly, uh, this is now going to be the explicit formula, um, very, kind of similar to what we've been doing. Um, and it, you'll see the similarities with uh, the, the explicit formula for the arithmetic one. Uh, the first term still is a thing. So notice right here, we have the first term right here. We do have common ratio, right? That's the thing we keep on multiplying. And remember, it is... Uh, repeated multiplying, and whenever we have repeated multiplying, that's when you get, go into the world of exponents, right? So repeated adding is just multiplying. Repeated multiplying is exponents, okay? Uh, so there's that. So remember this exponent right here, this is why I put it here, because exponent is the previous term number, okay? So we have here, again, the term we want, g sub n, is equal to the first term, which we know as g sub 1, Right, and then R is our common ratio. And then our previous term number is just N minus one. Okay, so that's what that's gonna be. Um, so if we wanted to do it for uh, the eukaryotic cells, right, uh, that's just gonna be G sub N is equal to, remember these are the only two that we're going to see the highlighted ones. Those are the only things that we're gonna replace. So the first term for eukaryotic cells was one. So if you wanna go back to the table and look at the first term, remember we started with one cell, right? And then uh, we are doubling, so that's our common ratio. That so is r is is two to the n minus one power. Okay, and so this is our. Or you, if you want to say, if you don't want to put that one there because you know that multiplying with one is just the same thing, so you can write it like this if you want, and we will assume that it's a one in three. Okay, but if you want to write it like this, that's more explicit, and it is the explicit formula. So let's try and do these, uh, write these uh, geometric sequence, the formulas down. So the explicit formula is down, I'll get there. So G sub N is equal to, uh, remember it's going to be the first term. And the, if we look over here, it's 45 times that by the common ratio, which we found yesterday was two to the N minus one. That's it. Now we could find any term, does not even matter. Right, same thing with this one. What is, so it's gonna be G sub N is equal to the first term, which is one, one, two, three, four, times by, so remember our R is one tenth, and we're gonna to have to put parentheses around that because that is a fraction, and uh, it's gonna to be to the N minus one power. That's it, so writing the equation. And uh, we're going to go on to here. So uh, remember, we were uh, practicing this. So in your calculators, you're going to practice doing this. 
So again, we this was for the eukaryotic cells. What about for the 11th division, right? Uh, and then so you plug in 11 is equal to one times two to the uh, 11 minus one power. And, um, and that's gonna just be two to the 10th power. Uh, the one is, is uh, negligible. You don't have to think about it because it is multiplying by one. If you multiply anything by one, it's just gonna be whatever that anything is, right? Um, but that's the only time you could do that. You can't do that other times. Okay, and then so you get two to the 10th power, which is a big number. Um, okay, if you really wanna know, so G to the 11 is equal to two, four, eight, 16. Wait, didn't we do this one already? 16, oh wait, we know this one already. 10, 10, 24, like we did this one already. All right, the 11th term. And then the 22nd term, that's gonna be a really big number, All right? So again, if you wanna use your calculators for that, um, that's gonna be two. So you put the two in mine is like this little carrot button or for yours is like X to the Y, like this one right here. Uh, that's what it would be. So 21st power and I'm getting uh, 2,097,152. I don't know if I can remember that. 2,097,152. I think I got that. Okay, so that's that's a lot of cells after only 22 divisions, right? So uh, to see how this grows way bigger. So we tried this with five eukaryotic cells, right? So instead of starting with one, we're starting with five. And uh, you're going to see, like, what if instead of doubling, like it doesn't divide into two, it divides into three. Like, is that going to make a difference? I think so. So right here again, so the five is our beginning. So it's our A1, or not our A1, our G1, because we're in geometric now. And our uh, three is going to be our R. So we just plug those guys in, and then everything else is exactly the same. And then we're going to, if you want to write the first five terms, we could totally do that. So this is going to be five and then we triple it. So it's going to be 15 and we triple that 15 times three, 45, 45 times three, 90, 135. That times three. Oh, shoot. I don't know. But you know what I mean, right? So you can just do that, right? That's going to be your number right there. All right. And then we're going to, it says determine the total number. Okay. So it's just basically you're plugging it in just like how we did right here. So that's going to be to the, thir uh, the 13th term, which means this is the exponent is the 12th term, right? So it's, it's the 12th one. So it's going to be three to the 12th power times five. Remember exponents first, and then you multiply. Do not multiply five times three and then do it to the 12th power. That's a completely different beast, okay? So make sure when you do this, you go five times three to the 12th power, just like this, which would give you uh, what is this? 2,657,205. Um, because if you do five times three and then you do that to the 12th power, the ANS just means the answer, the previous answer. And do, do you see the difference? Do you see how this, how big this, this is when it goes E like that, that means to the, like it's the scientific notation at this point. So basically it's 14 decimals we move this over 14 decimal places. So it's a huge number. Like your calculator can't even fit it in here. It doesn't even work that way, right? So yeah, it's you're overestimating way too much. So you got to make sure that you do the right order of operations first exponents, then you multiply. All right. And uh, that is going to be the end of that. So don't forget to do your homework.